reasons for that. Uh, first is increasing regulatory bullshit, like bothering people with things like, uh, you know, KYC and uh, where did you get the money from and uh, all these ridiculous questions when people are buying, selling or using in any other way. Uh, this has become quite extreme lately. Uh, people uh, want to uh, pay in a restaurant and uh, they are supposed to answer things like if they're politically exposed uh, persons or if they're doing money laundering or things like this. So uh, that's the first part. Um, of course, uh, it involves things like uh, KYC, AML and tax reporting. I won't talk much about it, uh, but this is the problem that I'm uh, presenting a solution for. And the solution doesn't involve uh, uh, lobbying in uh, parliaments and uh, institutions, but uh, on a more peer-to-peer -peer way. Um, of course, we are uh, at this beautiful Monero conference with a nice atmosphere and people with a different set of values than traditional uh, conferences like Bitcoin conference. So you might say, OK, but uh, Monero is not a transparent blockchain. So what are you talking about? There's no privacy concerns. Uh, but uh, I will look at it from from the perspective uh, of Bitcoin first uh, and you will you will see what I'm talking about. So. Bitcoin was supposed to be this peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. It's written right there in the, in the headline. And then uh, uh, we look at what people do to actually buy Bitcoin. And uh, uh, they buy it on an exchange, which reports to the tax office, which uh, saves your KYC documents in some archive folder. Uh, they report uh, uh, suspicious transactions uh, to financial police. And of course, if you do crypto, it is already a suspicious transaction. So they rather report everything. Uh, not such a nice thing. Uh, uh, then we have these guys. Uh, we don't have a, such a problem with Monero with uh, chain analysis, but it's still a problem. Uh, and then, of course, uh, on the banking side, what most people do is they send um, fiat to the exchange uh, and uh, uh, or withdraw fiat from the exchange through the bank. And the bank has the same uh, set of problems, including risk of account closure and all this regulatory bullshit. So uh, these regulations are coming and the solution uh, doesn't depend on what kind of regulations there are. I will tell you why. But they basically prefer a risk-based approach, to which means uh, uh, they say, OK, uh, if it's high risk, then uh, we need to check everything. Uh, first, it was exchanges. Then they extended it to payment gateways, now ATMs and providers of wallets and so on. Um, so this is the problem that I'm trying uh, to uh, find a solution for. Um, if or rather when these regulations are put in place, we have some solutions and I will uh, show you the inspiration for it. Uh, one of the first solutions is uh, proxy merchants. Uh, so these are people who can um, take your crypto and uh, sell you uh, the products or service that you actually want to buy. So an example of a pro proxy merchant could be um, a gift card vendor, which we just saw that we will have some nice gift card vendor. Um, but it can be anyone, you know, I want a new phone, new laptop. I find a proxy merchant, they buy it whenever, wherever they want, uh, Amazon or whatever. I pay them uh, with, uh, um, with uh, Monero. Uh, or anything else I want, and they uh, get me the product or service. So if these regulations are put in place, I don't want to be the person with my name on the, on the trading account, and uh, proxy merchants specialize in handling this kind of problem. Then we have uh, something I call Vexlax. Uh, it's from uh, the... Uh, uh, dur during uh, uh, communism in Czechoslovakia, we had these guys that were close to, um, uh, to uh, bus stations and train stations, and uh, they were exchanging Czechoslovak crowns for Deutsche Mark uh, and vice versa. So these were basically illegal traders, 
uh, that enabled uh, trade for common people, not for uh, institutions. It didn't matter what kind of regulations there were. You came from uh, West Germany, you wanted to uh, buy something in Czechoslovakia, so you would, uh, uh, you would find this shady person and they would take your Deutsche Marks and exchange them uh, to Czechoslovak crowns. So I believe that the time for Vexlax uh, is coming again. Now they will not change between Deutsche Marks because Deutsche Mark doesn't exist again, but they will exchange uh, between fiat and crypto. And we can already see this in countries with highly regulated exchanges. Uh, uh, one of the uh, common places where you can see this is Colombia, where uh, it is quite heavily regulated. Um, and this is the solution uh, to, the, uh, to the problem of regulations, or one of the solutions, um, becoming part of the parallel economy. I will ex explain uh, why this works. One more thing uh, before we go there. Uh, one other option is if your country where you live in, uh, if uh, the regulations are shitty, you can just leave to another country <laughs> uh, with less shitty regulation. Um, I don't prefer this approach, although I, I like to escape to other countries, but uh, the governments, uh, like comparing governments is kind of like comparing tapeworms. They're kind of all bad. <laughs> um, uh, just in different ways. Uh, I like uh, the atmosphere here because uh, people here understand uh, that we are not only choosi choosing a technology with number go up, uh, but we are choosing values and I really like uh, uh, Edwin, I hope uh, it was Edwin, uh, that I, I got the name correctly. Uh, I liked uh, your talk about the, the values and the ontology, so thank you for that. So making a choice in crypto like uh, uh, Monero uh, is actually a, a value choice and you are choosing values like privacy um, and uh, uncensorability, uh, sovereignty and so on, privacy. So um, uh, in order to be able to benefit from these uh, values, you need a private way of acquiring crypto. You cannot just, you know, wire uh, I don't know, 5,000 euros to Kraken, buy Monero and say, oh, now I'm super private because I have Monero, because no one can see it on chain. Well, no, but the financial police and exchange and bank and uh, uh, tax office and all these guys see what, what you're doing. So that's not really a good idea. So we need solutions um, outside of just pure transaction level security. And my inspiration for this, how to do it, are pot dealers, guys that sell wheat everywhere in the world in a heavily regulated environment. <laughs> so um, these are people, so almost anywhere in the world uh, selling wheat is highly regulated. Somewhere it is more or less uh, allowed, well, if you, if you comply with something, in some countries they can kill you for it, so it's, uh, the, the level of regulation varies. But almost nowhere it is like, okay, anyone can sell it. Uh, if not anything, then uh, the regulation that is there usually is uh, the regulation that forces you to pay taxes. So it's regulated everywhere. And for some reason, I don't know how, wherever you go, uh, in under 24 hours, if you want to buy wheat, you have wheat in you. I don't know, it's magic. <laughs> so what do these people, that provide this, uh, this product in a highly regulated environment worldwide do in order for you to be able to buy wheat anywhere in the world, in a, in a village, in doesn't matter. You can, you can always find a way to get it. Um, so let's look at some, some features of wheat dealers and how we can compare it and use the techniques that they use in creating this peer-to-peer -peer market. So first of, first of all, it's a peer-to-peer -peer structure. There is no, uh, uh, there is no uh, central exchange or central website where you go and say, see, okay, who's the vendor of wheat in Lisbon, you know? They're standing on the street, they're, you know, you need to know someone, but you, you can find a provider, but it's peer-to-peer. -peer. It's not a centralized organization, usually. 
Uh, it's high availability everywhere, cities, villages, doesn't matter. You always find a way to buy wheat if you want. Uh, it addresses the problem of regulation. The protocol for buying wheat is almost the same everywhere. Sometimes they have to be more careful, uh, but it doesn't matter what the regulation is. So, uh, what I'm saying is that we don't necessarily need to lobby the government to pass nice regulations towards crypto, because these guys who are selling wheat will also be able to sell us crypto and often they actually combine and uh, there are now weed, weed dealers that accept crypto and also they, they buy and sell crypto. Uh, so this addresses this market structure of peer-to-peer -peer merchants, uh, addresses the problem of regulations and you don't need to read the 300 page, pages of the new fancy EU regulations to, uh, to be able to get your crypto or use it. Uh, they also provide education. If you never smoked weed before, they will tell you where to light it, <laughs> how it works, and uh, uh, they can answer your questions, what kind of strain it is, what, what to expect, and so on. So uh, this will uh, be similar to, to crypto. They have handled security. So just by the sheer fact that they're not in jail and they're selling you weed, they have done either something right or they just started yesterday. <laughs> But the most successful weed dealers know how, how to handle the problem of cops. They either use reputation or, um, or, or, or they bribed, uh, bribed the cops. They, they found a way. So they handle the, the side of security. So despite a uh, heavily regulated environment, they, they handled it. And because it is available anywhere, uh, all around the world, it scales, scales really well. So. Um, I often get this concern, oh, you know, one dealer, uh, one, one uh, crypto uh, dealer per city is not enough and there are not, not many of them. No, if there's a business opportunity, <laughs> you will have these guys standing at every corner and satisfying the market demand. Of course, you have to pay a premium for that probably, but, uh, but this peer-to-peer -peer economy scales much better than the hierarchical structures. So Vexlag, the crypto dealer, is part of the peer-to-peer -peer economy and they solve the problem of balancing supply and demand even at the times when one side dominates. So right now we have a huge crash, everyone wants to buy, who is stupid enough to sell to you, <laughs> cheap Monero. Uh, uh, well, uh, someone who is hedged uh, will probably sell to you, so someone who doesn't care about the exchange rate because they uh, they know what to do with it. They either have a dollar value fixed somewhere on some uh, derivative markets or in stable coins, or they will hedge the Monero value um, uh, on the long side. Uh, they provide privacy. Uh, they don't want to know your name. Uh, they don't want to ask you if you're politically exposed. Uh, they just want to, uh, you know, do the transaction safely and happily leave. So. Uh, this is a way to acquire uh, the coins privately with cash. Please don't use SEPA transfers and Revolut and all these things. Uh, use cash, meet with people. It's a nice social occasion to meet your Vexlag and uh, do the deal. Uh, they provide education. So if, uh, uh, if they see that a client wants to buy some ultra shit coin or uh, they want to buy uh, 10,000 euros worth of Monero into some software wallet or something or some online custodial wallet, they can say, okay, <laughs> you can do that, but let me first tell you why it's not a good idea and then, then they, they can help. And they solve the problem with regulations. So, uh, how do you find a crypto dealer? Uh, you can go to local Bitcoins or local Monero and so on. But I, I will suggest to you that it's not such a good idea. Uh, uh, local Bitcoins, for example, was infiltrated by American IRS uh, agents who were doing some trades and then uh, asked people if they, uh, if they filled the right form. Uh, and uh, some people had to pay some fines. So not such a good idea. And the reason it's not a good idea is uh, the same as, uh, uh, as the reason why it's not a good idea to uh, go to a website and buy wheat online if you <laughs> live in a country where this is regulated. 
So how do you find a pot dealer? How, how would you do it? Does anyone have, anyone have any idea? How do you find weed dealer? <laughs> so first of all, follow the smell, you know? <laughs> oh, someone smokes weed. Okay, let's ask them how, how, they, how I can get someone. Okay, it's bothering people, but uh, you know, you have the same hobby, so <laughs> might, not, might not be that uh, intrusive. Um, then you might know some people who are, you know, smoking a lot of weed and you can, you can uh, go there and ask them. Uh, so uh, in crypto, it's very similar. So if you don't know where to find this dealer, what, what you can do is you uh, first, you can go to a meetup uh, or a conference like this, meet people, get to know them. Uh, introduce yourself and maybe someone has the opposite problem if you want to buy maybe someone needs to pay rent and they want to sell um, if not you can uh, follow your social circles you know a cousin knows someone who got rich in Bitcoin so ask your cousin who's that guy can I buy some from him <laughs> does he want to exit to fiat uh, so basically you use the same technique as finding a weed dealer. Uh, you follow the, the social network, the real world social network, and you just ask. And because these social networks are something that is called uh, uh, small world networks, uh, you will very, very soon find, find someone who will solve your problem. If not, you can start a group uh, within uh, a group of friends or peers in your city. Uh, you can use uh, a secure messenger like Signal, Threema, maybe, maybe Matrix, Matrix Element, uh, not Telegram, that's a spyware. I don't know why crypto people always use Telegram. I, I don't like that shit. Um, and basically, this group uh, has offers. I'm buying, I'm selling. Uh, uh, and uh, that's how you clear the trades. It's very easy. Uh, you have trust uh, in these groups, so that means uh, that you won't let in people that you don't know. Uh, and uh, uh, you can have a, a parallel group with the discussions, uh, so that's quite important. Uh, and um, uh, you should embrace it. I have written a blog about how to start this. Uh, this group within your community. So if you uh, you can take a picture of the last slide, the link will be also there. So what what kind of problem does does the Vexlag solve? Um, they have uh, these papers with uh, dead American presidents, for example. In on one side, they have a, a crypto rep representation of the same thing. So preferably something that has a dollar value and they just change the form. So they take the paper, convert it into um, something uh, on a crypto network that keeps the dollar value. I will tell you what, what that can be later. And then when someone wants to make the opposite trade, um, you take the crypto and you switch it to fiat. And with every trade, you make a small, uh, small commission on every trade. Uh, don't uh, be afraid to ask for some percentage. ATMs also ask for percentage, so that's not a problem. Uh, so uh, basically, um, in these crypto groups, uh, what usually happens is, like right now, when I look at the groups that I am in, everyone wants to buy crypto, no one wants to sell because it crashed. So this is the great time for someone who can hedge themselves against this and they can, uh, they can sell you the cheap, uh, cheap Monero, cheap Bitcoin um, and still be price neutral. So basically um, what you can do is in the groups, you just trade once, uh, one side to the other back and forth in normal situation and in extreme situation where, where there is imbalance in demand uh, and, su and supply and you cannot clear trades, that's when the professionals make most money. So I know some Vexlags that are doing this, but they are doing this three times per year. They're not, you know, constantly standing at the corner and, and doing, they, they want to make their whatever, three to 5% uh, 
like three times a year in a, uh, a when there is demand and there's no supply and then they can chill out and enjoy their commission. Um, and other trades are usually cleared by normal people that, uh, you know, need to pay rent or want to go to a vacation and they need their fiat or they want to buy some more crypto. Um, so how do we hedge it? Um, you can use basically two techniques. Uh, you can use uh, futures. Uh, uh, there are risks and benefits to both uh, both versions, futures and stable coins. Uh, with futures, we have an uh, exchange risk, but what is nice about futures is that you are risking only the collateral for hedging, which can be 30% of the value or 20, 15% if you automate. Um, so that's a that's a nice uh, way. There is, of course, KYC risk, so the, ex the futures exchange might introduce KYC, even if they don't have KYC right now. Uh, so you need to consider this, but there are some pretty nice projects that are working on futures uh, that are uh, decentralized or at least anonymous. So uh, you, can, uh, you can do this. Uh, because of the way the futures work, um, there is something called a funding rate or a contango. Um, and when you're hedging to fiat, you are usually paid some interest rate. So Vexlag, if, if the Vexlag is not trading, uh, they can chill out and they, they, they are making some interest rate on, their, uh, uh, on, on one of the sites, the crypto site. Um, if you want to uh, do it with Monero, you can. FTX and CoinEx have XMR uh, perpetual swaps, so you can do it, do it uh, today. Um, they don't require KYC under certain amounts, and we are only talking about collateral, so you're, uh, you don't need to deposit uh, the whole amount. So that's the way to do it with Monero. You can hedge uh, Monero to US dollars on these exchanges. Um, and uh, you can directly sell the currency that you're hedging. You don't need to do any more exchanges, so that lowers the fees and, uh, and frictions. With stable coins, you have, uh, of course, the risk of some smart contracts, regulations, blacklisting, uh, holding the pack, uh, and so on. On the other hand, you can hold the keys uh, in your hardware wallet, which is uh, really nice. Um, if you want to earn interest, you need to put it in some DeFi protocol, which has other risks, uh, um, uh, and uh, one of the nice projects that is directly integrated with Monero and has an exchange between stablecoins and Monero uh, is called Incognito. So if you want to keep your privacy a little bit and be hedged and uh, and be able to exit directly to Monero, you can you can check it out. It's pretty nice uh, nice project. Uh, so. Just to see, this is uh, an example of, ex uh, of um, uh, annual uh, interest rates on futures. Right now it's quite small, but uh, it used to be something like this. So 9.61% uh, is not uncommon. Uh, stable coins have, uh, I don't know, 3 to 8%, depends on the weather. <laughs> um, Anyway, so we are at Monero conference. So I have a I have a suggestion why to use Monero. So one of the first problems that every Vexlag faces is um, tainted coins. Uh, first of all, it's more problematic from the customer side. The customer doesn't want to get tainted coins, and the, this is one of the reasons why while while they're afraid. I have seen this many times. They ask, oh, where, where, you did, where did you get the coins from, what kind of coins they are, uh, and so on. So the first problem is actually people don't want to trade. The second problem, which is a little bit worse, is uh, that uh, uh, they can call you back in uh, uh, half a year and they say, oh, uh, the coins you sold me <laughs> have a problem. I didn't know that, but now I know. So what, what do we do? So Lightning Network uh, can solve this kind of problem, uh, but then there's a problem of liquidity and channel opening fees. Um, another problem is I, I have a, uh, this Vexlag uh, in one Latin American country. I used to buy local shitcoin with them, and then I realized that, uh, that he always gives me the same address. <laughs> 
So I looked at the blockchain and I've seen uh, how much money he's, is he making in a month. Quite a good life, actually. <laughs> but you should, should not enable people to uh, see all your transactions. So that's another reason to use um, um, uh, Monero and not uh, uh, expose your trading volume, basically. Um, also, with Bitcoin, uh, waiting for the first confirmation, uh, especially if it's cold or rainy outside, is not so much fun. And it can take half an hour for a, a transaction to confirm. Of course, if you have a client that you know, uh, you might say, OK, zero confirmation is nice. It will confirm uh, at some point. Uh, but it doesn't have to. They can double spend it. So uh, this, is, uh, this is quite nice that uh, the blocks in Monero are a little bit faster. And uh, I think one confirmation is enough. Um, what is nice is you get also uh, the level of privacy of Lightning Network with hardware wallet security. You don't need to walk around with your private key. So if you're, um, uh, if you're buying uh, crypto, if you see the transaction and it's confirmed, uh, you don't have the private key to spend it. You have a view only wallet. So that's also nice. Um, uh, so that's about it. Um, and you can also do uh, uh, privacy preserving uh, dollar cost averaging. Uh, I will, I probably don't have time for that. Uh, but uh, if you know how to hedge, you can basically, um, you can basically uh, turn some of your fiat reserves into uh, into crypto, but hedge it into fiat. So you're still, you still have fiat and you can buy basically from yourself. Uh, so that's a very common problem. You know, I want to dollar cost average, but I don't want to go to ATM and, you know, meet some people and uh, trade with them. It's burdensome and I want to sit in my comfy chair and click and that's how I want to dollar cost average. Um, uh, so what you can do is you can trade larger amount, hedge it into fiat and then unhedge it. Uh, once a month and you can sit in your comfy chair, click and don't lose your privacy. Uh, and as, as a bonus, you can earn interest rate on that fiat, which is positive, not negative, usually. All right, uh, then you can balance the sites. Uh, so one of the problem that can happen is that you have a lot of a uh, uh, lot of uh, papers with the dead presidents and uh, you need to get rid of them and turn them into crypto uh, uh, or the other way around. So there are, uh, there are some ways. Um, I mentioned proxy merchants. So if you have a lot of crypto and you need fiat uh, to make the trades, uh, one of the good things is uh, buying discounted gift cards and basically becoming proxy merchants for fiat people. You just give them discount. They're all happy because they uh, get their shit cheaper and uh, and uh, uh, you get fiat um, so you can use things like uh, purse.io for uh, for discounted shopping on amazon and that's how you uh, how you get rid of crypto and get the papers and you can then sell the papers uh, uh, to your customers or you can use the feature of uh, hedging uh, actually uh, paying interest rates, so you can provide uh, interest-bearing accounts to your family or, uh, or your friends. Um, if fiat prevails, you can do the opposite things. Uh, you can uh, take a loan uh, and, of course, you can sell your services, teach people crypto and uh, get more crypto that way. So, as a conclusion, uh, I think uh, I'm using this um, uh, 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 this metaphor uh, of my friend who is an um, economist of Austrian school, he says that money is the memory of the good deeds uh, of society. So uh, if you help someone, if you provide some valuable service, it's recorded in a database called money. And because the main memory can go bad, uh, for example, if you have a central bank, uh, they might corrupt the database by inserting uh, fake entries. Um, uh, it's good to have a backup. Uh, so uh, crypto economy is a, a backup uh, memory uh, of good deeds of society. And Vexlax are people who make these records available. Um, 
they are the protection against bad regulations because to them uh, regulations don't matter <laughs> and these are for corporations uh, people uh, dealing stuff don't care what the regulation is um, they can provide privacy and education even in a favorable regulatory environment um, and uh, it's a good way for crypto enthusiasts uh, to uh, make some more money on the side uh, on the site and they're returning the peer-to-peer -peer nature to crypto. Thank you very much.